last time I mentioned how I display houseplants in one of my vlogs, it was received very well, so I thought I would do a dedicated video on some of the more unique ways that I like to display my houseplants. I hope that this video will inspire you in ways that you can display yours. I would love if y'all left your best plant display hacks or tips, tricks, things you really like to do to display your plants in cool and unique ways down in the comments. And that is very, very helpful for my channel. So I really appreciate you leaving that comment. Let's get into my best, what I feel are my best plant display methods. Let's get into it. The first thing I've done to help make my house feel a little bit more planty is actually to put my plants on my light fixtures. I know this isn't going to work for everybody and everybody's light fixtures, but for some of my more boxy hanging ones, I have started to put planters on top of them. It actually looks really cool and it helps bring my plants up where drilling holes in the ceiling really stresses Ryan out. It is a way that I can bring my plants up high without having to drill holes in the ceiling. Some people expressed concern about the plants falling off, but I haven't actually had that issue at all. And my kids are bouncing around, jumping around all the time. It ha they haven't even come close to falling off. They haven't moved an inch. If you're worried about them moving around, you could always put a 3M strip at the bottom of your planter so that it has a little bit added security when you set it down onto the actual light fixture, but I think it looks really, really cool. I wouldn't put too heavy of plants on this, but where I just have like four lighter weight plants, it has worked just fine. Oh, and I also use sphagnum moss in these planters, so it is a lot more lightweight than soil. This second thing I've done to make my plants a little more interesting is added this cool beaded trellis to my Passiflora trifasciata plant. I wanna add like several of these so that my plant can climb across them and it'll just be like a canopy of plants above my computer desk where I edit all the time. I think it'll make me feel very happy to have a canopy of plants above me. And not only that, I do think the beaded trellis looks cool on its own. In the video where I did this, I, I was like, I didn't know how to cover up the hook that I had the beaded trellis going to onto the wall, but I ended up adding a picture frame over top of it. Fixed the problem, it looks so much better now. Really happy I did it. It's gonna continue looking more and more interesting as the plant climbs along the trellis and really fills it in. So I'm super excited about that. Highly recommend. It was one that I had to buy the beads for, but they were very, very inexpensive. So it was a good one, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Maybe I'm biased though, because it was my own idea. <laughs> If you have any really small plants, sometimes they can look a little bit cluttery if you have them all over your shelf, like my shelf here it looks a little cluttery. I personally like that look, but if you're looking to disperse those small plants a little bit more, I love to make the tiny little planters into hanging planters and actually hang them from some of my larger plants. My favorite example of this is my ficus audrey. I've actually hung a kalanchoe donkey ear succulent from it, and I think it looks so cool. It's so cool. I mean, it just like the plant is already beautiful. The plants are already beautiful on their own, but then hanging the plant from another plant like just makes it so much more interesting. And you glance at the plant, you're like, oh, that's a beautiful ficus, glance back. Oh, and it's just like exciting. It really makes me happy. It's such a small thing that makes me happy. And on that same note, I haven't exactly done this yet, although I do have plans to in the springtime when I repot some of my larger plants, but I am going to start adding smaller plants around the base of my larger plants. You know, the ones that just need like the super large pot, but have say like a really skinny stem right in the middle. So there's just like a whole bunch of soil showing around. I'm going to start adding plants into that so it can just look full of plants instead of just like a pot and then like a stick. You get what I'm saying? I think it'll really just add a finish, finishing touch. If you don't want to like pot the plants directly into the planter, you could always put them into terracotta or nursery pots or whatever and just set them around the top of the soil. Next, I couldn't do this video without mentioning my Ikea cabinet. I did build out an Ikea cabinet and where I had a bunch of plants in display here before I built it out, this just looks so much cooler. And literally anytime somebody comes to my house, they always go right to this thing and talk about how cool it looks. Ask me a bunch of questions about it. Of course I love it, but it's been really cool to see how much other like non-plant people love it as well. And it starts a lot of, it starts plant conversations. That's what we all want, right? It, it 
leads into the conversation we all want to have with people without forcing that conversation ourselves. And I do have a full video on this. I will link it down below. If you're interested in watching the process I took for building out this cabinet. Next is kind of along those same lines, although this one was much cheaper and much easier of a process, but it is my container plant propagation pond. I think it's really cool and it was super, super simple. You can make this as complicated of a process as you want. I didn't really want it to be complicated, so I kept it super simple and turned out really cool. Ryan, Ryan said he actually really likes it. We run the water in the evening and it's so relaxing to lay in bed with the water running. I can definitely see myself doing more of these because it was so easy and fun and highly recommend. I will also link that video down below as well. There's gonna be lots of links in the description, so be sure to check down there. This one I talk about all the time and it is actually my lamp planter stand. So this lamp I got for like 10 bucks at Walmart. It has like the bowl top. I just took out the light bulb, put a bowl that fit inside of the white light bowl, <laughs> put a potted plant into there so that it, it's in like a, I don't know, so it has a thing to catch water. I can just add water into that bowl and it waters from the bottom. I'm going on all weird. I really, really like this. I've been on the hunt for some cool secondhand floor lamps that I can convert into standing planters like this. I think it's so cool. If you have children or animals, you maybe need to consider keeping them in rooms that aren't frequently visited by kids. I did have it out in my living room for six months with no issue at all. They never touched it, never got knocked over, not even once. It just Kind of depends on how rambunctious the beings in your household are, but I think it looks really cool, super inexpensive. You can always find cool lamps like this at the thrift stores. Definitely, definitely recommend. We all have an old lamp in our garage or basement, so put it to use. This plant right here is actually a perfect example of this, but a way I've really liked displaying my plants is by keeping them in clear jars and where you can do this just with regular like propagations and keep them in water. I do think it's really interesting if you find a container where a nursery pot or planter, whatever you wanna use, with a drainage hole fits on top. You can let the plant just live in that for as long as <laughs> possible, where you can water directly into the container on the bottom and let the roots grow into that. So in this Phil Hartley philodendron right here, it, I just bought it at Lowe's, kept it in the pot it came in from Lowe's and I use liquid water in the base of this. Just fill it up as needed. The roots have done really, really well. I'll, I'll show you some close-ups, but it's just a really interesting way to grow the plant without just having the plant sitting in water, which that looks really cool too. I love when the root systems get wild in propagation containers. It really makes you focus in on them and be like, wow, those roots gives you a second to really appreciate it, you know, but this is even more interesting than that in my opinion. So. It's highly, highly recommend. All right, next is something I've been very obsessed with lately, and it is actually finding interesting wood slabs and potting them into my plants. Usually you see very small wood poles, just kind of boring wood pieces to use as stakes for plants. But I recently have started adding interesting wood pieces that Ryan finds when he's just out looking for wood to build shit. He brings them home and I pot them in with my plants. So my favorite example of this one is my philodendron rugosum with this. Is it a, is it, oh, I forget what kind of wood it is. It's either pine or Nordic cherry. <laughs> It has these cool imperfections on the wood. To me, it makes it look less just like a plant sitting there and more as like a statement, more as a statement thing for my plants. You get what I'm saying? Like makes it to me feel more like a piece of art rather than just like a plant sitting there, which plants are beautiful pieces of art too, but this just adds an extra layer to that in my opinion. So I have really, really enjoyed doing this one. And as Ryan finds cool pieces like this, I'll do it more and more with other plants as well. So this is something I'm very much hooked to right now. Another example of this would be, I got some, I think I think it's called chola wood maybe. It's like the cactus bones. I bought some pieces of that from when I went to Vegas. I did also post a video of that. I'm going to use these in a similar way once I just decide what plant and pot is going to look the best with them. I fear commitment. I've said it a lot of times. I have a very hard time with that. But once I find the perfect things for them, I will be using these as stakes for my plants as well. And it it's just, it's just like those wood, basic wood stakes, but like elevated, more interesting in my opinion, more texture, more color, and I don't know, just, yep. 
That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> the last one I'm going to say is actually to make handmade planters yourself and display your plants in them. This is my number one favorite thing right now. Like hands down out of all these, it's my favorite at the moment. Although it probably switches up moment by moment, but I've been making polymer clay planters. I've been mentioning it so much in so many of my videos, but it's because I am truly obsessed with making these. I not only love the end result where I can pot, the, pot a plant into these little planters and be like, yeah, I made that, but I also am enjoying the process of it so much. Like I've been making these floral ones, these very intricate floral ones. Well, what I feel are intricate and they feel so satisfying. I enjoy sitting down, messing with the clay for, you know, hours. <laughs> That's how long these things take. By the time this video goes up, I believe a tutorial for those floral planters will go up as well, but I'll also be posting a video with some more easier to do planters. Not sure when, but that'll definitely be going up in the next few months. So stay tuned for that if you're interested in learning about some of the, some of the planters that I've come up with for my plants. It's unique, like even, even if you follow my tutorial to make these floral planters, like my planters and your planters are going to look different. They just are, you know, based on the movements we do to make the flowers and I don't know, it, they're just very unique and I love it. I, so <laughs> that's my last thing I like to do to display my plants in unique ways. What's more unique than a handmade planter, you know, by you. Those are all of my current favorite unique ways to display my plants to just make them a little bit more interesting and i hope that there was something new on this list that you maybe haven't thought of before i hope it inspires you to try out some new things with your plants and i will be reading through all of your comments for some inspiration as well so i really appreciate you watching this video all the way through please thumbs up or thumbs down this video to let me know if you like this type of content or not and yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you my next one. Bye.